Hey, everybody. I'm Ethan, your super cool YouTuber friend. Today we're going to make some direct positives on regular photo paper, just like that. Um, this is a process based on um, some YouTube videos from Joe Van Cleve and Don Frula. Um, I'm making a self-developing pinhole camera that takes advantage of this, but today we're just going to shoot some uh, medium format direct positives. So follow me into the dark. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just, um, you know, to test the process, I'm going to put a sheet of film inside this uh, Mamiya back so we can shoot it outdoors. So open up the film back, uh, open up my paper here. Probably better to do this with a paper cutter, but I'm going to do it with the scissors because of laziness. I'm just going to put this uh, piece of paper here on the film gate. Dennis, I don't know if you can see this in the dark. Can you? Yeah? Mm hmm All right. Just put the film magazine on top of it. Close this guy up. I've got a piece of paper in here. Um, I'm going to stick it in the back of my homunculus, but you could do this with any camera you can stick a piece of paper in the back of. Um, lock the back on. Now let's go outside and take a picture. Come on! So I'm using my light meter. Um, I'm rating this paper at ISO uh, 0.8. Uh, if I was shooting a paper negative, I might shoot it at uh, ISO 2, uh, but it's better to overexpose it a little bit because we're going to need to remove a little bit more of the silver salts um, than just half. And um, you'll have to play around with whatever paper you're using to find an optimal um, a exposure rating uh, for this process, but I, I found I'm using some really old uh, Ilford, grade, Ilford multi-grade RC, um, and it's about ISO 0.8. So um, I'm looking at you right now. You are, let's see, about a sixth of a second at f3.5 at ISO 0.8. So um, let's see, we're about seven feet away. Uh, second, five, shutter. got to put in my cable release, but that's okay. Okay, so I've taken my picture, and let's go develop it. Come on! So a quick overview of what we're going to do. So the normal developing process goes something like um, first developer, which will react with any sensitized silver salts on the paper, and that will oxidize them and turn them black. Then normally you use a stop bath or a rinse to uh, stop the action of the developer. And then you use a fixer, uh, which does a bunch of things, but uh, mostly it removes all of the silver salts that were not developed in the developing process. That way, when you take your picture out into the light, there's no uh, white or, or clear silver salts that can then turn black over time. In this process, I'm going to first develop um, in a standard developer. This is Dectal, but you can use D76 or any, any sort of standard developer. And then I'm going to use a mix of citric acid and hydrogen peroxide to bleach only what has turned black. And so um, basically I'm going to take all of the silver salts that were hit by light and then oxidized by the developer and remove them from the paper. Um, once I've done that, I can then fog the paper uh, and take all of the remaining silver salts that would normally be removed by the fixer that are still there uh, and turn those black and then I'm going to redevelop the image. Um, and then everything that would be white on the negative is hit by light, turns black as I develop it again, and we should have a positive. So I'm going to turn off the light, and let's see what happens. Open up this film back. Pull out my sheet of paper. Can you see it in the tray? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that I develop this paper negative to completion, which means, you know, basically a little a little bit past when I stop seeing the image come up. And so um, in this process, you'll see it's actually a pretty dark negative. I saw the image, and now I see it's all not going completely black, but it's it's too dark for your standard paper negative. But I kind of want that because I want a lighter print. Um, everything that's black now will eventually be white. So. 
have a pretty black image. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I can still see details in that photo. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to quickly dip it in citric acid. Um, the idea behind the citric acid is um, when the bleach uh, reacts with the silver salt, I think, and I'm no chemist, but I think that what's happening is it's creating uh, some sort of silver ion that saturates the bleach uh, or, or bleach-like uh, hydrogen peroxide, and it can no longer bleach out any more of the black silver salts. And so the citric acid will then react with the silver ions to create a different silver salt that precipitates out, and so the uh, bleaching process can continue again. So I'm going to start to bleach, and you can already see like some bubbles coming off um, and the image getting lighter, and that's the bleach reacting with um, the part of the image that has been, um, that has been exposed. Now again, you might have to go back and forth between the citric acid and the bleach because what's going to happen is the bleach will bleach about as much as it can and still leave an image. Um, but you can then dip it in the acid, turn those silver ions back into a salt that you get rid of, and then continue bleaching um, and the bleach will accept uh, more, more of these uh, oxidized silver particles uh, in, in the film. I do something like, you know, um, a minute or less in the bleach and then just a few seconds in the acid and back and forth and back and forth until you can see that this paper will turn totally white. Um, so I think this is about, if, I, if I'm doing it in a tray, I can do it by eye, right? I can see it's basically stopped reacting and maybe I could leave it here for a few hours and it would bleach out, but um, let's just try, you know, dipping it in the acid shaking it around a little bit. Shaking it off. And going back to the bleach. And now we should see the bleaching action happen again. We might see some bubbles form and things start to get a little bit lighter. Sometimes I can do this in, in two rounds of bleach and acid, bleach and acid. Sometimes it takes up to four. Um, I've been going by eye so far. Um, and sometimes I like to go one more, uh, one more bleach than I can see under the red light. There might still be some um, oxidized uh, silver salts on the paper that I just can't see uh, in the dark. I think the darker your initial uh, exposure is, or, or the more overexposed the initial exposure is, the more silver you have to remove from the paper, which requires maybe more... Um, baths or, or switching baths between hydrogen peroxide and citric acid. Um, the citric acid I'm using is just plain uh, canning citric acid I got from Target mixed to the same concentration as tomatoes and the hydrogen peroxide is 12 percent hydrogen peroxide which is a V40 at your local hair salon for bleaching your hair. So now you can see it's really starting to bleach out um, all of the image getting rid of everything. Um, and still there's a couple really dark spots that haven't uh, come out, but that should come out in the next bath. Okay, so I'm going to do one more and we'll get rid of the final little bit of uh, dark silver here. And now I think you can see there's one little very faint dark spot that's fading quickly. We're almost at totally bleached. So what happens if you go to the next step without getting rid of the dark spot? Um, then I have what would look sort of like a solarization or sabatier effect where that is actually a bright spot, right? But it won't look bright because it has the residual dark spot from the initial development. So it needs to be completely white? Completely white is what we're going for. Or, I mean, you could deviate for special effects, but I'm trying to make as clear a positive as possible. All right, so now you can see uh, the paper is totally white. And what that means is that all of 
the silver salts that have been exposed to light that would have turned black in the paper negative have now been removed from the paper, but we have not yet um, we have not yet fixed it. So there's still all sorts of silver salts in the area that is not uh, touched by light, right? The the dark part of the image. Um, I'm just going to dip this in acid one more time, real quick, and rinse it off just to preserve the developer. I don't want to put any acid or bleach into the developer. Um, just use the sink over here. I should have had a bath, but you know. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is expose this to light. You could do this in the bleaching bath as well. Um, and so now all of the unexposed silver salts will be exposed and the exposed silver salts are already gone. So turn that light on. Do you need to change your aperture to see? No. Okay. And slip it in the developer. Do we really have enough in there? And so now what should happen is that um, everything that should be dark is now exposed to the light and will start to develop. I think that actually looks pretty good. There you see a picture of my lovely assistant, Dennis Muradov, cameraman extraordinaire, uh, who is filming this picture, this, <laughs> this video right now. And I like to develop this to completion. Um, this is a very contrasty process, and you might use something like pre-flashing of the paper to reduce the contrast, but you'll see um, I kind of like how this looks. It's, it's pretty pleasing, uh, particularly in open shade. Uh, we've had a bit of trouble in, you know, bright, contrasty sunlight. Um, at this point, you probably should not need to uh, stop and fix because um, we're developing all the salts that are left to black. And so by fixing it, we're removing all of the non all of the non-developed uh, silver, but that has already been removed by the bleach. So this should be it, but um, I like to just kind of to be safe uh, right now because I'm still experimenting with the process. Um, give it a quick stop bath just to preserve the fixer because it's cheap. And then um, we'll fix it and of course rinse it so you don't get any crusties on your uh, picture. I'm going to speed this process up a little bit. You might want to do these things for a little longer, but you know, my YouTube videos are already pretty boring if totally enlightening. Um, mm -hmm. um, I'm excited about using this process in my self developing pinhole camera, maybe making some 4x5s or even 8x10s uh, with the same thing. I think it'll be really fun.